This show will deal with the situation where we do not have a regular glide path. And there are several factors that would give us an irregular glide path. One of them would be anatomical. Obviously, some anatomical configurations are very treacherous to try to use mechanical preparation methods. Notice this 90 degree bend well away from the full working length. Another reason anatomically that we may not have a glide path is in the instance of a bifidity. Anytime a canal divides, there's an opportunity for the file to get caught and not be able to track along the negotiated portion of the canal. Sometimes pathological conditions exist like internal resorption and it's not easy to slide a file through the resorptive defect to pick up the canal on the more apical side. Other pathological conditions occur when teeth degenerate endodontically and that could be the presence of stones. You can notice in this beautiful illustration from Lars Bergman's that he showed in the yellow area is a transverse section through the mesial buccal root. And at that level you can see that the smaller canal is open and patent, but where the arrow is, there is a stone attached to the internal wall. The green arrow shows us a deeper calcification in the distal buccal system, and again at this slice, at this level, all the roots have open patent canals, but the DB again has a stone. These stones can prevent instruments from sliding to length. So we've looked at anatomical instances and pathological conditions, the other instance where we'll frequently not have a regular glide path is in retreatment. Oftentimes bigger instruments were inappropriately carried deep, ledges resulted, and that ledge can prevent a file from easily passing around the curve to length. Well we've talked about negotiating canals in other just-in-time shows, and you can imagine using 10s and 15 hand files in the presence of a viscous chelator to arrive perfectly at length. But once the instrument's at length, it means you have a pilot hole, but it doesn't mean you have a reproducible glide path. So withdraw the 15 file a couple millimeters, and without reciprocating the handle, slide it back to length. Now pull the 15 file back three or four millimeters, and see if you can slide the file back to length. Now pull the file back even further. When the file is inserted back towards length, sometimes it can hang up, in this example, in a bifidity. Notice that a rotary instrument wouldn't know which way to go. It would hit the septum and roll over and frequently break. In the instances where we don't have a smooth, reproducible glide path, the ProTaper file system comes with manual handles. These handles can very easily, chair side, be attached to the rotary handle, rendering the instrument manual. You're still thinking, okay Cliff, there's a handle on it, but it's still a nickel titanium file. So we use an orthodontic bird beak plier to put a pre-curve on the tip of the instrument. We have to exaggerate the curve because when we let go, because of shape memory, nickel titanium wants to straighten out. So we have to exaggerate the curving move so when we release the file, it's curved appropriately. The teardrop stop can be torqued to correspond to the curve of the instrument. So you can see in this maxillary first molar post-operative film that if we looked specifically at the MB root, we could imagine a 15 file was at length if you pull it back a few millimeters, you can see as you slide it back towards the terminus, it would go right out the lateral aspect of the root. In this instance, we have an ill-positioned lateral canal. And because nickel titanium has shape memory, it'll always follow the path of least resistance, and that's a straight line. In other words, it would go out the lateral canal and out the lateral side of the root, but it wouldn't make the deeper recurvature. This is a manual finishing procedure. Notice this mandibular posterior abutment. Notice the distal root is trifid. And in these instances, we must come back and look at basics. If we check for glide path, you'll find that the handle has to be reciprocated in order to direct the pre-curve file to the portal of exits. Therefore, the apical third needs to be finished manually. So let's review quickly glide path management. We know that we sometimes do not have a desirable glide path when we have anatomical, pathological, or iatrogenic events. 
We want a 15 file at length. We simply remove the file in progressively longer intervals of distance and we see if that instrument can slide over the apical one-third. In the instance it can't, then we do not have a reproducible glide path and rotary should not be used, neither should reciprocation. The orthodontic bird beak plier has a beam that allows us to put various degrees of curvature on the end of the file. The closer we go to the end of the plier beam, the tighter the curvature. The more we go away from the tip of the beam, we get a more gentle curve. We looked at this case just a little bit ago and we noticed the complexities of the MB root and the recurvature and the ill-positioned lateral canal. This is an example where manual instruments are appropriate to shape the apical one-third. So to summarize my thoughts on the irregular glide path, there are many canals that are not conducive to treat with rotary or reciprocation motion. These cases can be identified before we ever stick a mechanical instrument into the apical one-third. We've learned how to convert a rotary file to manual use. The good news is you'll see a sharp reduction in broken instruments and it will not really take any more time to shape three to five millimeters in this manner.